welcome um, everybody uh, to the last day of Virtual Open Week. Um, and thank you for joining us uh, for this session on the Masters of uh, Machine Learning and Computer Vision. So first of all, I would like to begin by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land in which we meet today. And I would also like to pay my respects to the elders past and present. So today, um, we I have the absolute pleasure of having Mia Mia Lu. Um, she's a lecturer at the Research School of Engineering, and she'll be talking uh, about the Masters of uh, Machine Learning and Computer Vision. Um, a little bit of housekeeping before we uh, get started. So your microphones have been muted, um, and this session will be recorded. If you uh, have any questions, uh, please uh, make sure to put them on the Q&A box and uh, we will make sure to get to those questions as soon as possible. So without further ado, um, over to you, Mia Mia. Okay, cool. Um, okay, uh, should I first, I think, share the screen? Yes, of course. So, okay. Um, hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to today's session. Uh, I'm Niu Miao Liu. Uh, I'm from uh, Computer Vision and Robotics Group in uh, CAX. Um, today, I'm going to uh, introduce our Master of Machine Learning and Computer Vision program at NU. Uh, it's a new program uh, created in 2019, uh, and it uh, is one and a half years old now. So, um, Before I introduce our program, uh, I would like to actually have a brief introduction uh, to machine learning and computer vision. Um, I understand the diverse background of the audience. So um, what is computer vision? So computer vision is a scientific discipline which aims to uh, actually uh, to let the computer see and understand the world as humans from visual data, such as images and videos. So machine learning discipline uh, actually involves letting the computer to learn from data, such that the computer can accomplish various tasks. Um, here, uh, I use computer to represent actually AI agent. Um, the goal of computer vision and machine learning is to actually uh, let the computer, to, de to develop algorithms to make sure that the computer can see the world and understand the world as our humans. So this is an example of our actually computer vision machine learning techniques used for, used for the autonomous driving car. This car auto automatically drive on the road. It uses cameras and other sensors such as LiDAR to collect uh, videos and also depth information. Uh, when it comes to a section, so the autonomous agent, the AI agent, use the data and use our machine learning and uh, um, computer vision algorithms to understand what is happening around the, this autonomous car. For example, try to recognize, detect what the, uh, where other cars are and also understand the traffic light. So use the information he has learned or has just captured to make the decision. For example, to turn left or go straight. So this car actually is like humans that he, it could travel in the city um, many hours, uh, remember the road, and also, for example, um, learn from the experience to make decisions. So this is one application of the MLCV program. Uh, it has several other applications, for example, called virtual reality. So our MLCV techniques could be used for entertainment and also for other professionals such as designer. Um, it could also be, it has been widely used um, in social media. For example, uh, usually our user use our phone to take uh, photos. Um, so our phone could automatically detect the face regions and focus on the face regions, okay? And also our MLs, this all actually depend using the uh, machine learning and computer vision uh, techniques. Uh, after the user, for example, the customer, uh, upload the photo to some social media, for example, Facebook, and the algorithm could automatically detect the face, 
recognize the face and tag the face with different identities. Uh, another application is autonomous system. For example, it could be used for autonomous car and also for these drones. So MLCV algorithms could allow these AI agents to auto, uh, automatically navigate uh, in the environment to do several tasks such as del delivering groceries, uh, things like that. Um, MLCV techniques also have been used for medical imaging, especially in this pandem pandemic period. Um, we could use uh, computer vision and machine learning techniques to, for example, to, de to detect tumor or segment the tumor uh, to help the doctor to make the decisions. So uh, machine learning and computer vision become even closer in recent days because a large amount of data are available. Um, well, we call these uh, two disciplines are weak AI area um, is a sub uh, area for the broad uh, AI discipline. So um, for this slide, I would like to advertise, um, so and um, try to convince you why you need to study uh, machine learning and computer vision um, with us in ANU. So ANU has the best reputation for artificial intelligence, machine learning, and computer vision in Australia, and is among the top universities in the world in these fields. And more specifically, ANU is the only university in Australia that has been rated at ERC, ERA level five, three times in a row in the research field of uh, image processing and artificial intelligence. Actually, this field uh, it also covers our computer vision and machine learning. So ERC, ERA is an indicator that to show that we have really high level of research and education um, and is the only university that has rated uh, level five uh, for so many years. Um, so we also team up with researchers from computer vision and the machine learning group in CIRO's Data City One. So CIRO is Australia's uh, science and uh, uh, technology center. So from this slide, I'm going to uh, introduce the, some like details about our machine learning, uh, master of machine learning and the computer vision program. So uh, in order to start, probably um, students uh, are expected to first click this link and you will be directed to this page. Um, so this page called machine uh, master of machine learning and computer vision program page, um, it, it has an overview. So it introduced uh, the general background of uh, our college and our program, the, the strengths of our program, and also the admission criteria, such as GPE criteria, cognate discipline, and also a uh, study, which means the courses you are expected to, stu to study under this program. So here I would actually um, would emphasize a few things about admission. Uh, students uh, with a bachelor degree from a cognitive discipline with a GPA of five or seven, um, or um, a, a student with a bachelor degree from a cognitive discipline with a GPA of four or seven, and a minimum of three years relevant work experience are encouraged to apply with, uh, with us. Um, so um, cognitive discipline, uh, you can find details about this cognitive discipline uh, on the web page. Uh, it's, for example, it could be uh, computer science, engineering, mathematics, physics, um, technology. So we have several uh, like more concrete definition about this uh, cognitive discipline. We also uh, evaluate case by case and to decide whether um, your application falls in the cognitive discipline along with us, our cognitive discipline or not. So students uh, with an Australian bachelor degree uh, can typically uh, receive up to 40, uh, 24 units of credit. And students with an uh, ANU computing or engineering degree or a similar degree at another uh, Australian university will typically receive 24 
um, up to 48 units of credit. Um, the maximum of credits a student can receive is 48 units. Here, I need to mention that each course is about uh, six units. So 48 units means uh, corresponds to a one year study. Um, so based on this information, I, I could summarize like this. So students who has done um, the undergraduate study in Australia or with our AU uh, could finish the degree in less than two years. So yeah, from this, from this slide, I'm going to introduce uh, the courses that students are expected to learn uh, under this program. Um, when we design this course, we actually um, somehow uh, di uh, divide these uh, courses into four different levels. We call it level one courses. Um, first, um, students are expected to accomplish these level one courses at the beginning of their study. So this is called foundation courses. Um, it's uh, compulsory um, and it's mainly uh, about, I mean, two courses about programming and communication. So after, we hope that the students finish, after students finish the study, uh, they can have basic uh, programming knowledge and communication for the following courses. So the level two type of course are actually called program core course. Um, these four courses are compulsory. Students are expected to learn um, uh, introduction to machine learning, statistical machine learning, computer vision, and advanced topics in computer vision. From these four courses, um, students will, will uh, learn basic knowledge about computer vision, machine learning, and also the most state-of-art state of techniques uh, in the, these two fields. Um, for level three courses, um, students are expected to uh, learn some advanced techniques. For example, from document analysis course, students will learn uh, about natural language processing, and also students can learn robotics, um, logic, uh, artificial intelligence, and advanced topics in artificial intelligence. And also deep learning um, from these advanced topics in mechatronics. Um, the level four type of course is to make sure that students have the ability to uh, do independent project or industry uh, internship. Students are expected to finish a uh, uh, minimum of 12 units uh, on a research project or an industry inter internship. Um, also, students can choose to extend their uh, capstone uh, project or e internship uh, up to 24 units. Uh, 24 units means a uh, half year. Uh, it means students can actually work on the project or the internship for half a year without uh, doing any other courses. Uh, elective courses um, is uh, uh, like op op optional, um, but students uh, should actually finish up to 24 units um, across the NU, which means there's no restriction uh, on the courses selected and this um, uh, 24 units. Um, you can use these 24 units to uh, enroll in uh, some courses uh, in the uh, level three courses or any other courses in different college or under different discipline. Um, our program is try to build uh, the students' criteria uh, in the field of machine learning and computer vision. Um, we noticed that uh, we have several graduates from uh, st starting their um, career in robotics uh, companies or some AI companies um, in Australia uh, and China or US. Um, it's also a potential pathway uh, for your PhD study. Uh, I have seen several students study, uh, started their PhD study with us or other universities in Australia uh, this year. So for more information, uh, you are welcome to uh, visit this webpage or send emails to our colleagues in the student service in CACS. Um, I think that's all for today.
uh, from me. I'm ready to take questions. Um, I, um, I might have some questions um, if I'll get started on them. Um, yeah. So if, um, I, I was just curious to know what kind of projects do students um, do when they have to do the professional practice courses? Um, what, what are the types of um, courses, projects that they could be involved with? Uh, sorry, you mean the professional course, uh, the professional the research projects, or is the first year? Yeah, first course? year. Um, you have to do six units, right, of professional practice courses. So, what kind of uh, where, where do where do the, our students will be end up working with or doing their projects with? Okay, so this professional practice uh, actually uh, teaches students about how to write a report, uh, like how, um, how do the uh, reasoning, um, based, uh, manage the projects, uh, those kind of things. I think they are all very, uh, I mean, uh, necessary for different courses they are going to learn. They need to manage their study and they need to know how to present the, uh, themselves and communicate with um, with the uh, students uh, in a same group. For example, students are ex expected to do group uh, project in different courses, for example, computer vision, uh, machine learning. So uh, professional practice, uh, I think, covers different um, aspects for, for this. Um, they, uh, they are, this course will teach about, for example, yeah, report, um, talk to students how to communicate with each other. Um, I think they have also some advanced uh, professional practice um, course, uh, but for us, uh, we, our requirement is six unit. So students could just finish uh, one or two of the professional courses, um, and we believe they should be able to pick up the techniques that are necessary for their following studies. Yes. Thank you. And a question about um, possible career pathways. So yeah. what normally are the students that finish the Master of Machine Learning Computer Vision, where, where do they end up working, for example, or what are the different career paths that they can take? Okay, so um, that's a really good question. So um, as you know that we have a lot of uh, international students from China. Um, I, from my understanding is uh, quite a few students finished their study and they went back to China. They start, they start their career in robotics start company and also with big tech companies such as uh, Tencent um, and uh, Baidu, so Alibaba. So this type of uh, companies focus on, for example, um, um, like uh, autonomous car, so this is one type of job uh, and also like warehouse robots. So as far as I know, my student actually start her career as an engineer uh, in the robotics company, uh, try to use the knowledge she has learned uh, in robotics and the computer vision, also machine learning courses um, to design algorithm for the robot to navigate freely in the wire horse. Um, so uh, he told me that actually um, is also a learning process for, uh, for her. Um, he would like to more like uh, bridge the gap between um, like the theoretical and also the practical parts uh, in, in her job. Um, I think he, she, is, she is very happy with uh, her current position. Um, and also we have a few students that start um, get offers from uh, Australia companies. Um, uh, I think that company is for, uh, in Sydney that a company is for um, like sensors, for, for example, cameras, they would like to build this 360 view uh, camera. Um, so it requires a knowledge of computer vision. Um, uh, students work, I mean, also as an engineer, actually try to um, like build products with team, uh, yeah, to de deliver the 
software, software and also testing with a customer because it's a small company. Uh, I think uh, I understand uh, they get, they would like to get experience in different, uh, I mean, step for that, uh, um, like a product uh, uh, delivery process, yes. So um, another question. So you mentioned that um, um, the ARC Center for Ex of Excellence in Robotic Vision. So how um, how many students do get involved in in that center, or how wh what is the collaboration? How does the collaboration work? Okay. So um, for the center, uh, we have we usually have summer school. So uh, it usually happens at February. Uh, in our Kula uh, that campus, um, yes. Um, so students usually register in that um, uh, summer school, attend the talks, uh, talk to, uh, for example, uh, renowned um, uh, researchers uh, worldwide um, in computer vision, robotics, uh, and also machine learning uh, area. Uh, the, I think the, um, so the experience is um, will result, for example, can lead the students to build a connection for their future, um, uh, I mean, uh, working or PhD application. Um, yes, so, and also in our NU node, um, like our colleagues are affiliated with the uh, center, so a chief investigator and I'm the associate investigator. Uh, we usually, for example, supervise students. Um, so set up the research projects. Students have the uh, opportunity to join in different, for example, talks, uh, reading groups. Uh, and also we have the opportunity for students to collaborate um, and with these different nodes mm -hmm. or different research uh, and the different research projects. Um, I think students have the opportunity to talk to different people uh, uh, like within the center, uh, in the university within the center, uh, because the center uh, is across, I mean, uh, has um, like uh, QUT outlet, university outlet, Monash University, and also us. Um, so there are a lot of ongoing uh, collaboration between different nodes and also research projects. Um, for example, my students uh, working on projects with uh, student with chief investigators also um, and um, yeah it's a it's an opportunity to talk to different people working on projects yes it's a it's a nice community then yeah uh, within the different groups that they're working I've heard about the summer school um, and um, it looks like a really exciting opportunity for students uh, to meet some of the like-minded people who are interested yes. in the same area and they can just collaborate together, which sounds really exciting. Um, another question. So yeah. um, what, what is the kind of profile of the person who decides to do a master's of machine learning? So you mentioned that um, there's some cognate disciplines. So what normally is, um, what's the, the type of person that would decide to do a master's of machine learning? So, Usually we have, we have a lot of students uh, studied in uh, computer science, uh, engineering, uh, and also electronic engineering. So more, more specific is electronic engineering. We also have students from physics, um, students studied in uh, statistics, uh, students uh, studied in mathematics uh, before for their undergraduate. Um, so, yeah, uh, we have different, uh, I mean, uh, students with diverse background. Uh, but the, I mean, the uh, essential criteria for us uh, on the students is um, students, sh should, students should have um, certain knowledge of mathematics, such as linear algebra, and also programming uh, skills. Uh, if they don't have that, strong skill, they could, for example, pick it up um, like when they just start, start their uh, program mm -hmm. uh, do, uh, using the, for example, the uh, programming courses. 
uh, yes, uh, basically, um, yeah, we, we have uh, students with engineering and computing background. Perfect. Um, we have another question. So does the Bachelor of Applied Analytics meet the cognitive discipline requirement to uh, do the Masters of Machine Learning? So if you, for example, decide as a pathway, is it, is it a good pathway to get into the Masters? So you mean Bachelor of Data Analytics with NAU? Or? Yeah. The um, yes, I did. Analytics. Yes, I checked their, uh, I mean, the courses and the program. I think it's, uh, it's, aligned, it's aligned nicely with our program. Um, uh, possibly, I mean, students will focus on the machine learning side. Um, they probably need to pick up the, for example, they should have the linear algebra um, and some uh, requirement for, for robotics, um, those type of uh, knowledge. Uh, but based on my, um, I mean, yes, I get the inquiry from colleagues before and I check the program. I think, yes, it's aligned very well, yeah. Perfect, oh, we received another question. Greetings, I'm an international student got admitted for the Masters of Machine Learning and Computer Vision in February, 2021. Mm. Is it going to be delivered on campus or online? This is a really good question. <laughs> I think the university haven't made their own that the decision yet. So I think if we offer the courses in campus, it means that students are allowed to come back to Australia. If they can't, um, so I think there should be the solution to that. I think students should not worry that much. Yeah. So how has been the delivery mode um, for this year, for example, as a, as a reference? Has it all been online? Okay, um, for me, so I taught computer vision course last semester. So it means semester one, 2020. Um, so at the beginning, before the pandemic, everything is in campus. Um, we know that the pandemic somehow uh, like uh, stopped the students from uh, China to come back to Australia early. So we have this by mode. So which means we have online mode and also or in campus mode. Uh, we have tutors and also to take care of the students overseas. So for the first semester is designed um, for both modes, I would say. Um, for the second semester, uh, it's totally online. So uh, yeah, currently, uh, from my understanding, uh, all courses are delivered online in semester two this year. Yeah. Um, I have another question related to that, but probably not that related. Yeah. Um, what are normally the class sizes for this master's? How, how, many, how many people um, do you expect to see enrolled in this course? You mean the course or the program? Oh, the program, sorry. Yes. Okay. So we have seen that a, a steady increase, actually. Uh, so keep in mind that this, this is a new program. So it starts I mean, uh, semester one last year in 2019. Uh, and because I was not the program convener before, uh, I heard the information like this. So last year, uh, we have 25 students cohort enroll in maybe semester one last year. And then later on, uh, probably 20 something semester two. Um, we have 40, um, I mean, around 40 students in semester two uh, this year and 45 students in semester two, oh, sorry, 40 students semester one this year and 42 students uh, enrolled in our program mm -hmm. uh, from semester two, beginning of semester two. So we have the, this steady increase in numbers. Yeah, and it's heavily, it's very personalized. So it's small cohort, so uh, you'll be able to meet all the, yeah, get close to them. I had another question from Amit as well. So if it's going to be online, how would I interact with fellow students to discuss study topics? Okay, um, that's a good question. So for us, we have called the Wattle, um, um, I mean, the, it's an online platform for the conveners to post the, uh, for example, the lecture notes 
and share the, for example, the assignment, post assignment exam. We have tutors to answer questions. Students can ask questions freely uh, in the forum or on that platform. Uh, we have the, for, for, for example, for the conveners, we have the uh, consultation hours. Um, we could answer students' questions uh, like on this, in this online mode, um, based by, uh, yeah. Um, and also, uh, let's see, uh, we have this uh, online delivery of the courses. Uh, usually we have this Zoom session um, for, um, for, yes, for all the students can log in at a certain time uh, to attend the lectures. If you count, uh, we have the recorded lectures and could be streaming online via the uh, water uh, platform. Um, students could interact uh, through the water platform or they could have their own actually um, social media uh, groups. <laughs> uh, um, for me, I think um, my understanding is, is they have their own this uh, offline, yeah, uh, their own groups and they could share uh, information or discussion on different courses um, and also uh, they could build their own called the Microsoft team groups, uh, Teams group. Um, could that is more professional? They can, um, yeah, have more uh, discussion related to courses. I think. Perfect. Thank you so much, so much, Bml. Um, another question: Are there any opportunities for internships or work experience while you're doing your degree? Yes, that's a really good question. Uh, because it's a new program, currently most of students actually are doing their uh, research projects with faculties uh, in the college. Um, uh, we are currently actually uh, uh, having students showing their intention to do internship um, uh, in Australia, actually. Um, in our college, we have, uh, for example, we have colleagues help students um, like to plan for their internship, uh, uh, for example, application, interview, and also managing their um, courses and also the internship. Um, quite a, we have colleagues take care of the uh, internship, um, I mean, the process. Uh, um, students are expected to find the, for example, the internship opportunities uh, with uh, companies in Australia, um, also, you could find an opportunity in overseas. Um, we actually are building this, for example, collaboration uh, relationship with different companies. We hope it will become more mature, make it easier for students to do the internship. At the current stage, uh, I think uh, students may need to work on a lot to find some opportunities uh, and talk to us. Um, we would like to guarantee that students could be treated fairly and also um, make sure that the opportunity is good enough for their career. Yes. We have a very good question coming. Um, yeah. So the Master of Machine Learning Computer Vision isn't recognized by the Australian Computing Society yet. Is it going to be a problem for international students once they complete their masters? Um, sorry, so you mean uh, it's not? It, 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 yeah, it's, it's not accredited by ACS. Not yet. Mm. Yeah, not yet. So would that be an, an issue for international students? Um, issue for students would like to uh, study in Australia or would like to stay in Australia? Oh, in, in terms of um, the, the prestige or the recognition that the Australian Computing Society um, brings. Um, I, I would say my answer would be no, probably, because it's no. Australian Computing Society. So if you're an international student and you're thinking about um, working internationally, it shouldn't be, it should be an issue. Ah, in terms of finding jobs, so would that be an issue? I, I don't think so. Um, but what, what has been your experience, um, Yao Miao, for you? Okay, uh, because, because the program is quite young, and as I said, the number, even though the number is increased, and now, uh, most of students actually uh, come back to uh, their hometown city, for example, uh, hometown country, sorry, um, because there are a lot of opportunities there than, uh, than Canberra or 
um, Australia-wise, I would say. Um, for example, um, we haven't uh, had such issues uh, relate to, related to this, um, I mean, finding, difficulty in finding job due to this uh, called accreditation. Mm -hmm. Accreditation, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, um, I haven't observed that because we don't have, first, we don't have enough samples to show the methods, uh, to, to draw the conclusion, yes. Um, yeah, um, I think, um, yeah, I cannot um, provide yeah. more useful information than, yeah. Um, I have a question in regards to exciting projects. So what, what are one of the, um, would you be able to name, so for example, an, an exciting project that um, a student has been done while doing the Masters of um, Machine Learning and Computer Vision? What has been some of the applications or some uh, deli uh, deliverables? <laughs> well, th there are a lot of uh, projects, I think. Um, uh, if you want me to name one or two exciting, I think most of them are all quite exciting because it's, uh, <laughs> uh, it's offered by uh, like all our colleagues range from written from a theoretical or uh, like um, yeah perspective uh, theoretical projects or uh, practical projects. Uh, for example, for me, I offer students um, uh, projects um, called the solar energy forecasting uh, using video data. Uh, so that is try to use uh, the data captured by uh, a camera uh, of the sky uh, to predict uh, how much solar energy will be produced in the coming maybe 10, 20 minutes or even long, maybe probably a few hours. Uh, I'm also working on, for example, uh, different type of research projects such as uh, human, understanding human uh, um, pose and also 3D shape. Uh, I have some, uh, student from MLCV working with me and also my PhD student on the called 3D human uh, motion prediction to predict or forecast what will happen um, in maybe one minute um, or yeah, uh, even longer um, about the, for example, the pose and the behavior activity of the human. Uh, and we have, for example, other colleagues offer projects on called um, uh, human recognition and detection, uh, not only human objects, uh, recognition, detection, recognize objects in the scene, um, and also building uh, some demo uh, on, for example, translating the sign language into gestures uh, to help, um, I mean, uh, other, I mean, uh, vision impaired uh, people. I think there are a lot of interesting you know, projects uh, with us and also with our colleagues uh, in Data City One Cyro, um, because for other co for the colleagues in Data City One, uh, they have really a lot of industry-based projects. Um, so the students can join the projects uh, and focus on one part um, to contribute to the practical, uh, I mean, product, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think I've, I've noticed also that um, that uh, a lot of the research that's been done uh, within the masters is very interdisciplinary. So as you were saying, like language, for example, so yeah. it's not just working with computer scientists, it's also working with linguists, for example, um, to understand, uh, yeah, how language works and automation. And yeah, so it's, it's, it's all very exciting, um, exciting research that comes out um, with the masters. So also, um, are there any chances for students, for example, to move into PhD, for example, if they wanted to uh, with the masters? Uh, yes, um, so uh, we encourage students uh, to apply uh, for PhD with us if they have really high uh, uh, academic achievement and also they are really interested in doing research. Um, I think, for example, for me, um, I'm, I was supervising uh, like two uh, MLCV students on their uh, final year project. Uh, one of them uh, are interested, is interested in doing a PhD with me and we'll go through this um, like scholarship ranking uh, process uh, for the coming round in August, uh, sorry, in September. Um, and 
because he has really high GPE, uh, we hope that um, he could get uh, the support from the college and uh, continue uh, his study with me. Um, I also noted that uh, the student, other students have um, like uh, intention to apply for PhD uh, with other universities such as uh, Uni University of Queensland uh, or um, Monash University or University of Adelaide um, uh, because I was asked to provide some reference for them because they were uh, they had taken my course and performed very well. So um, they are all examples of, um, of the career of the students for of our MLC students. Yeah. Oh, that's perfect. Thank you so much. Um, and I had another question. So um, as part of the um, as part of the degree, you can also do a capstone project. So I was thinking if you can um, expand a little bit of um, on the capstone project. Ah. Capstone project is the research project. It's a research so, project. Yeah, it's a research project. Um, so students are expected to enroll in uh, ENJN 8602. Um, and um, yeah, find a supervisor. Um, on, uh, I think we, we are going to provide a list um, about the research projects offered by different colleagues in our college. Um, students approach uh, the faculty's uh, academics, even uh, postdoc researcher fellows, um, find their, find their uh, interested in project, um, achieve some agreement be uh, between the student and also the supervisor, um, and then enroll or in a course, but actually it's doing a research project. Mm -hmm. um, so for at least uh, 12 units, uh, which means two or uh, equivalent to two courses, or could be extended up to 24 units, which means four courses. Um, yeah, we have the flexibility uh, to allow students to uh, do the projects. Perfect. And what are the kind of companies or um, different, uh, where do they, um, what are the type of industry where they will be collaborating? What kind of, um, um, yeah. Industry, you mean the industry internship or? No, I mean, like, for example, like you were saying that they work with, um, in an internship, what kind of companies that will, will they be um, working with their internships? Are they working with different companies or are they working with universities? Uh, who are they working with? Okay, they could work with, for example, CSIRO. So um, CSIRO Data City One. So it's a research and industry organization. So um, that they offer a lot of research, uh, a lot of projects. Mm -hmm. So plus if they get paid, so we call it an internship. So, and also students uh, could also do the internship with companies such as Sing Machine or Google or Amazon, I think there are a few companies in Australia, or with some startup companies. Um, for example, some robotics uh, startup uh, in, in Queensland, um, in Brisbane, I think. Um, so I guess there are various uh, opportunities. Um, so as long as uh, the, the opportunity is related to machine learning or mm -hmm. computer vision or both, mm -hmm. uh, are fine, I think. Oh, that's great. Um, I think we're going to um, wrap it up right now um, if there's no other questions. Um, but um, I just wanted to thank you so much, Pia Miao, for um, answering all those questions. It looks like a really interesting uh, program to do. And again, if you had any uh, further questions, um, you can send those questions. Oh, there's another question. Quick. Uh -huh. <laughs> Is there any support from ANU for students who may be interested in starting companies? So startups, I would say yes, definitely. <laughs> you mean doing startups? So if they want to, for example, start a startup. Oh, okay. Any right. support from ANU? Um, potentially, um, so um, so you mean for from our MLCV program or in general? Or from the ANU or from or from the program as well? Could be both. Yeah. Could be both. Yeah. Um, so at the current stage, 
so you mean the support as a uh, being uh, for example, I think that ANU, for example, has a um, has an initiative called Square, I believe, in which um, from it's it's from different areas around the university. If they're interested in doing startups, they can connect with other people who are thinking or like-minded people that they want to do any startups. So I think that the question was, um, yeah, surrounding that. If um, if um, for example, the program supports people. Who would uh, who's interested in um, starting any startups, for example? Right. Um, I'm not so. You mean our college should have the support for the AU? Yeah. If, for example, yeah, academics yeah, yeah. or different research groups will support. Yeah. 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 Yes. I think there are some uh, because there are collaboration between AU and also Data City One. Um, uh, and from my understanding is uh, colleagues yeah. who start their company uh, with collaborations from Data City One could get more support from both organizations, I think. <laughs> so it's, uh, yeah, um, it's another option. Uh, okay, great. Thank you. I think, um, yep, I think we're all good. <laughs> another question, I think. See, yes. Oh, yes, we have. We have actually, I, I, but I've just been flagged that we have a startup incubator program, which oh, okay. sounds really exciting. Yeah. If you want to know more about it, um, send us an email to marketing.kex uh, at anu.edu.edu and we will be able to send you more information about that. Um, that sounds really exciting. Uh, it's so good. So thank you very much, uh, Meow Meow, for joining us today. Um, there's still more happening for virtual open week. So uh, at 1.30, we have a drop-in session uh, with engineer academics. Uh, then at 2.30, we have another session with our student societies, which is very exciting. And then our last uh, session will be 30 years of engineering. Um, that will start at five. Um, so you're more than welcome to join us. And um, thank you so much, Mia Miao. I hope you have a great afternoon. Great Friday. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Uh, and uh, I'll see you next time. Thanks. Yeah. Bye. Bye.